Let's get into media issues again with media writer for The Australian, Sophie Ellsworth, who joins us live from Melbourne. Good to talk to you again, Sophie, and congrats on your reporting on this issue, this absolute dodgy journalism by the ABC. We looked at it in some detail last week. We've recapped higher in the program tonight, but I want to go to this statement from Mark Scott, not Mark Scott, sorry, from um, the ABC last week from uh, the editor-in-chief, Anderson, and he says, it's now come to my attention that in November 2022, the ABC Legal was sent a letter raising concerns about the audio editing. And he says that um, at no point was this letter or the information in the letter disseminated to ABC News. Now, this is outrageous, Sophie, and your reporting has added to this, saying there's another legal letter to the ABC a month before that. How can they know about this malfeasance for two years but only pull down the stories last week after Channel 7 exposed them? Well, it appears to be a massive problem now, Chris, on their hands. Uh, and David Anderson, in his statement, really threw one of their lawyers under the bus there. But uh, in the court proceedings that Heston Russell was taking that were afoot at the time, the defamation proceedings, which I might add that he won, uh, the lawyers were informed of issues not only with the doctored audio, but also with video content from that military operation in Afghanistan. Stand. So they have now announced that they are having an independent review into this, but it took two years for something to happen. It took uh, seven spotlight program for this video to be taken down, this doctored audio. And this, sometimes in this instance, Chris, it's not the crime that occurs, it's the cover-up. And the ABC are now uh, kicking the can down the road, I believe, with an investigation that could take a very long time. Yeah. Could take them months. You've These got to do something better than quickly, that. Chris. At the very least, let's hope parliamentary committees drill into this, but there should be something more transparent, quicker and more forensic than this, because there's already signs the ABC are trying to say that, oh, the journos didn't know about this. Like, they'll blame some technical editing mishap. If you're collecting awards for this journalism, if you are calling people war criminals, then you are responsible for the sound and the audio and the vision and the words that you put to air, and they've got to take responsibility. Well, they do, Chris. And Justin Stevens, last week when I spoke to him at the Melbourne Press Club, he said he didn't want to preempt the findings of what had happened here. But in the same breath, he's come out and said the reporters involved in this story had nothing to do with it. Now, yeah. how can he say that when an investigation has not taken place in its entire entirety? This already come out and said, no, 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 they're not at fault. So I think they're jumping uh, the gun here a bit, Chris. And I think they need to be very careful because Heston Russell sued them successfully. He yep. got $400,000 in damages and it's cost the taxpayers a fortune. Just quickly, though, Justin Stevens was the executive producer of 7.30 when this went to air and now he's the head of news. Is that right? Is he... Involved? No, it, it's not, Chris. He had no. he had moved on. He'd already from moved the 730, on, right. But he was he'd already moved on. Yeah, no, that's that's important to know. Thanks, Sophie. All over as usual. Appreciate it, Sophie Ells Ellsworth. Uh, keep reading her stuff in the Oz in the media section because this story ain't going away, and there's plenty more as well.